questions. Uh, this is an unusual topic. Um, the types of uh, unusual carotid artery conditions, uh, carotid sinus hypersensitivity or syndrome, and carotid artery kinks and coils are related to the carotid. The rest are mostly related to the uh, cerebral vasculature. Carotid sinus syndrome or hypersensitivity. Hypersensitivity is uh, an exaggerated response to pressure applied to the carotid sinus located in the carotid bifurcation. Uh, it uh, usually results in bradycardia, vasodilation, and hypertension. Clinically, it manifests as syncope or presyncope. The uh, evolution, uh, the definition, uh, carotid sinus uh, uh, hypersensitivity is evolution of three seconds or more of cardiac pause or a period of asystole or an end or a decrease in the systolic blood pressure more than 50 uh, mm of mercury while a carotid ma sinus massage is made, regardless of symptom occurrence. So the patient might fulfill the criteria and be a patient of carotid sinus hypersensitivity without uh, any symptoms. Uh, CSH is the three types, uh, cardio inhibitory, where the asystole is present, vasodepressor, where the drop in BP is present, and mixed type, where both are present. Epidemiology, CHS, uh, CSH is very unlikely before age of 50, more common in men than women, but there is some controversy there. Uh, its prevalence is 30% uh, of unexplained syncope in elderly and 14% of nursing home residents. When you see this diagram, this explains how uh, people above the age of 60 or 70, mostly uh, with assisted living, they have multiple overlapping uh, re uh, reasons for syncope. And uh, that's why there is no clear epidemiological uh, data regarding what is the incidence or prevalence of syncope. Uh, etiology, exact cause of uh, CH is not uh, is still not well understood, often associated with neurodegenerative uh, disorders and uh, chronic medical conditions. Uh, mostly it is thought to be a disease of age uh, as a degenerative condition. Pathophysiology, stretching or mechanical pressure over the carotid sinus overshoots the signals and results in hypertension or bradycardia or both. On clinical examination, uh, the signs and symptoms usually are after a pro provocation, uh, wearing a tight neck collar or a massage or some acupressure given on those points. It leads to presyncope or syncope. Maybe a patient will have a history of unexplained falls and uh, visual changes in the field, darkening of visual field on physical examination. There may be hypertension pallor just immediate to, immediately after the episode and bradycardia and bruises may be there related to the fall injuries that occur. Evaluation, the other causes of uh, syncope must be ruled out or mostly that's done from history. The best method to diagnose is a provocative test massage technique. Uh, the massage is uh, done with uh, the patient massage at the right carotid sinus for 5 to 10 seconds with a circular motion. If there is a, a response, it's uh, confirmed as carotid sinus hypersensitivity. If there is no response, switch to the other uh, sinus unless contraindicated. And the test is uh, diagnostic. If, if it's not diagnostic in the supine position, then the patient is made to sit upright and uh, after that also, if there is no response, you can use a tilt table. Uh, while doing these maneuvers, there has to be it has to be done in a hospital with full equipment uh, due to the asystole and the drop in um, hypertension, uh, drop in BP. The method of symptoms is a, a way to modification of this test, wherein after the first uh, massage uh, brings in a reaction of asystole, that is cardio inhibitory, then second time atropine is given according to weight-based dose, and this suppresses the cardio inhibitory effect so that you can measure the uh, baroreflex effect, wherein the drop in BP can be measured without any risk to the patient. Uh, absolute contraindications for this test are previous history of stroke, TIA, MI in the past three months, and ICA stenosis of 70% or more is a contraindication also, along with arrhythmia, and if there is a brewery over the carotid artery, it's a relative contraindication. This is showing a massage test, uh, the re uh, region where it's supposed to be massaged, and the right side is a patient 
in the upright position is uh, massaged and you can see the EC showing a period of asystole. Differential diagnosis, um, any or uh, cause of syncope or presyncope can be diagnosed with cardiac measures or uh, cerebral uh, cardiac causes or cerebral causes or medication adverse effects. Management non-pharmacological treatment includes adequate fluid and salt intake. This is for the uh, vasopressor, uh, vasodepressor CSH and avoidance of uh, physical counter pressure maneuvers that is wearing tight neck shirts, avoiding neck massage, uh, avoiding uh, movements of the neck to uh, the sides uh, repeatedly. And in patients who are having the uh, baroreflex uh, uh, vasodepressor uh, C, uh, CSS, they can also use drugs like midodrine, fludrocortisone is given. There is some benefit also given from norepinephrine, but these are very refractive, refractory cases. And all of these have limited evidence. The definitive treatment is in the form of permanent pacemaker implantation for the cardio inhibitory type. It, uh, the choice of uh, pacing is dual pacing and sensing. It also has the ad advantage of it overcomes AV block if present. And also many of these patients have concurrent sick sinus syndrome as well. So this helps in uh, treating both the conditions in the same shot. Surgical treatment was, uh, it's out of vogue nowadays, but previously there used to be surgical or radiological denervation of the carotid sinus. It involves adventitious stripping and had been conducted previously, but has gone out of vogue. Now. But it's still an option when pharmacotherapy is not effective and patient has debilitating symptoms. A three centimeter of proximal internal carotid artery just after the bifurcation is stripped of uh, neural tissue, adventitious tissue. Uh, conclusion, CHS, uh, CSH in itself is not dangerous. It's uh, the syncope related falls, the injuries in that age group that are more dangerous. And uh, because these patients are on multiple medication and uh, fragile, that risk always exists. Hence, it has to be treated appropriately. Uh, Moya Moya disease, it's a progressive occlusive disease of the cerebral vasculature with particular involvement of uh, the carotid, internal carotid system and the circle of bullets. Moya Moya stands is a Japanese word for puff of smoke. And on the diagram, you can see uh, the appearance of uh, puff, uh, this puff of smoke collaterals over a site of occlusion or a narrowing. The appearance on angiography of abnormal vascular networks uh, is the puff of smoke that is described. Pathology, it has uh, mainly three points in uh, this pathology is uh, how the vessel is affected. Fibrocellular thickening of intima starts first with the waving of internal elastic in it, uh, lamina and thinning of the media. These are usually seen around the terminal portions of ICA bilaterally and the circle of villus. Uh, the PR matter also may, may also have reticular conglomerates of small vessels that are also uh, affected. This picture show the internal uh, hyperplasia in the first picture almost a complete loss of lumen and uh, internal elastic lamina dis disruption. Etiology, the cause is not yet known, but it's uh, most likely to be genetic. Uh, Fukui reported a family history in 10% of patients with disorder, uh, the disorder. Minaharu uh, found that familial moya moya disease is an autosomal dominant with incomplete penetrance. That's why uh, there is no uh, fixed uh, identification, but the first gene identified that is related to Moya Moya is RNF213 and uh, it, it has polymorphisms at the mentioned uh, sites. Uh, Moya Moya has a uh, bunch of associations with neuro, uh, neural diseases as well as vascular diseases. And when the disease and the association is present, it's called Moya Moya syndrome wherein there is likelihood that a uh, patient uh, prognostically will tend to do worse. Epidemiology incidence is highest in Japan. In Japan, it has a prevalence of 3.16 per 100,000 population, an incidence of uh, 0.35 per 100,000 population. Worldwide, it is rough, one estimates is roughly 0 0.086 per uh, 100,000 population. It's primarily seen in Asians, but it can be seen in other races as well. Uh, Females are more than males. It has female predominance. Ages range from six months to 67 years. 
this is uh, interesting as it has a bimodal peak. Its highest peak is in the first decade, and there are uh, second two smaller peaks in the third and fourth decade of incidence. Clinical presentation, uh, cerebral ischemic events are more common in children. They may have hemiparesis, monoparesis, depending on the vessel involved. Mental retardation or persistent neural, neurological deficits may be present. In adults, the symptoms are similar to children, but hemorrhage is more common. So cerebral ischemia is almost 70% uh, dominant in children as a presenting factor. In adults, uh, hemorrhage is almost 70% as a presenting factor. Physical examination findings depend on the location and the deficits involved. Differential diagnosis are all the uh, diagnosis of associated with stroke, the differential diagnosis for a stroke. Lab investigations, uh, prothrombotic state workup can be done to rule out that, and ESR may rule out possible vasculitis, not definitively. Uh, usually, a thyroid function and thyroid autoantibody levels is done because it's, there is an association with raised thyroid and autoantibody levels and pediatric uh, moya moya. Imaging cerebral angiography is the standard for diagnosis. Uh, stenosis, it, uh, three points have to be seen. Stenosis or occlusion at the terminal portion of ICA or the proximal portion of uh, ACA or MCA, along with abnormal vascular networks in the vicinity of the occlusion and bilaterality, bilaterality of the findings, but not necessary bilateral. Early stages, it is unilateral. Uh, this is the picture, the MRI showing IV sign. IV sign is basically both flare and post contrast T1 linear pattern shows increased signal in leptomeninges and perivascular spaces. Sometimes even a T1 image looks like a T2 image with enhanced uh, white uh, contrast uh, uh, enhancement seen in the leptomeninges and spaces. This looks like a creeper crawling over the brain. That's why it's called the IV sign. Incompletely visualized circle of villus with moya moya vessels. <coughs> grading, I think this is a better way. So grading, uh, it first starts with narrowing of the internal carotid artery before the development of extensive collateral vessels. You can see the normal vasculature in the second one. You can see the narrowing at the distal portion uh, of the proximal portion of IC. This shows the grading of three to four with multiple moya moya collaterals and uh, a progressive narrowing and uh, disruption of the uh, circular villus and uh, main cerebral circulation. Panel D shows oblit obliteration of the internal carotid artery and the circular villus with a uh, brain mainly supplied by the external carotid artery. So that's the same thing mentioned here. Uh, narrowing is the first stage dilatation of main arteries followed by uh, collaterals, moya moya collaterals, then the collaterals decrease, then the internal carotids start to disappear, and then the internal carotids completely gone. Treatment, it ranges from bedside treatment to a rehabilitation depending on the presentation. Uh, in children, hyperventilation can induce symptoms. So patients in adults, you should avoid hot meals and strenuous exercise. In children, it is triggered by crying and uh, uh, dehydration, fevers. So those measures have to be taken to prevent episodes. Antihypertensive medication, everything that is associated with stroke control is also uh, part of the treatment. For ischemic stroke, anticoagulation and heparin or warfarin may be considered, but this is, a, uh, uh, it has to be a judicious call because uh, there is uh, evidence of hemorrhage into the already ischemic areas uh, following antibiotic. Surgical management is indicated in individuals with symptomatic ischemia. In pediatric cases, it's progressive, hence they have better uh, benefit from the intervention. The surgical re uh, revas is divided into direct and indirect. The direct is only one superficial temporal artery is diverted to the middle cerebral artery. This is at the shatus point. Indirect anastomosis, this is where uh, a branch uh, along with muscle of the uh, uh, superficial temporal artery is placed directly over the brain after doing a craniectomy. And if not, even the artery itself is laid there and placed directly over the brain. This is called synangiosis. 
and uh, this is the way of indirect anastomosis. But indirect is more uh, less successful than the direct in establishing sim symptom control. Uh, this is a shader's point. This is um, an extracranial landmark that marks the posterior extent of the sylvian fissure. Uh, any uh, intracranial bypasses are usually directed towards here. It exposes the vessels at the angular gyrus, most appropriate for bypass procedures, and surgical landmarks continue to be used today for bypass procedures. It exposes the uh, parietal branch of middle cerebral artery, so uh, that can be used for bypass. These are the steps in STA to MCA bypass. The post bypass uh, result picture use 10 0 11 0 sutures to approx uh, to the anastomosis. Prognosis they have a natural history of progression and uh, mortality is 10% in adults and most commonly due to hemorrhage and 4.3% in children in acute stage. Uh, 50 to 60% of individuals experience a gradual deterioration of cognitive function and re recurrent stroke is present in both adult and pediatric groups. Uh, death is usually from in the hemorrhage over time. So, carotid artery kinks and coils. Coiling is defined as the elongation redundancy of the ICA. Uh, it results in exaggerated S-shaped curvature and even in circular configuration of the vessel. Kinking is the angulation of one or more segments of the ICA associated with stenosis in that uh, affected segment. The degree of kinking can be divided into mild, moderate, and severe with less than 60 degrees, 30 to 60 degrees, and um, more acute than 60, 30 degrees. Kinking uh, is associated with neurological symptoms more than it uh, coiling is. Epidemi epidemiology, arteriographic methods say that incidence can range from 10 to 25 percent or even 43 percent in one uh, study. Uh, using duplex ultrasound, they found that there's a 24 percent, 24.6 percent rate of having these anomalies with females having the uh, predominance and age greater than 60 having the maximum uh, incidence. Most common abnormality was kinking followed by tortuosity, then followed by coiling. Coiling is rather rare. Uh, the etiology is two theories. Embryological etiology is when the heart uh, during embryological development, it uh, dips into the chest cavity, it coils, uh, it coils. at that time the vessels also uh, should adjust to that uh, dipping of the heart and they don't sometimes do that correctly and that leads to kinking or coiling, more, more uh, commonly associated with coiling. Uh, also the other theory is previous interventions or age-related degeneration or normal deviation, which is exaggerated over time, or hypertension. Uh, clinical presentation, uh, the hemodynamic changes associated uh, cause a embolism, for, embolism formation, and that is uh, causes either of the cerebrovascular event. Kinked vessel may be temporarily occluded by rotation of the head and neck. Cerebrovascular symptoms, uh, kinking is much more uh, associated with symptoms than coiling. It usually leads to hemispheric stroke or TIA. The diagnosis by any of the imaging methods. Coiling on CTA, uh, seen in the left image. Again, a kinking seen on CTA. Treatment, uh, the medical treatment is to continue with antiplatelet therapy in cases which are not having but symptoms and incidentally have found it. Uh, surgical management, the evidence for surgical management is study was done by uh, two groups. Bellotta et al. said that uh, surgical treatment for symptomatic patients was better than antiplatelet therapy in symptom control. Illuminati et al. said that correction of IC elongation is safe and effective with isolated stenotic kinking and symptoms. Uh, so there is uh, enough evidence to say that surgical method is better. Principles, simple kinking with symptoms is an indication for shortening angioplasty. Double kinking should be addressed with the section of the diseased arterial segment and reconstruction either by transposition or by interposition bypass grafting. GSV is the choice of point to it. Uh, as explained last time, GSV uh, has a better uh, uh, size match when compared to synthetic conduits in such areas. This is the diagram showing the uh, Types of 
This is also interesting. Something like a pyloric pyloroplasty done for uh, gastric arterial obstruction. This is a arterioplasty wherein uh, vertical incision is made and sutured transversely with a vein patch to reduce the size. Management in prognosis, surgical treatment conferred a significantly improved prognosis with minimal perioperative post-operative side effects compared with medical management. Uh, next topic, intracranial vascular stenosis. This is uh, similar to what we had been discussing with uh, due to cerebrovascular disease for the last four classes. So primary atherosclerosis, most common condition that is linked to it and other causes could be uh, dissection, vasculitis, CNS infections, radiation sickle cell disease and moya moya disease. Worldwide, it exists in 20 to 40 individuals per uh, 100,000 population. The cerebral circulation as it is described. So mechanisms of uh, ischemic stroke, it could be artery to artery emboli, uh, ischemic narrowing or symptoms due to hyperperfusion. Pathophysiology and risk factors, the same uh, as is associated with uh, cerebrovascular disease, hypertension, smoking and other risk factors. Non-modifiable risk factors are race, age, and some gene uh, variations in uh, ACE enzyme, polymorphisms, uh, plasma endostatin, and VEGF uh, factors. These are the only ones that have been researched so far. Diagnosis is done by catheter DSA. It's a gold standard. Minimal invasive neuroimaging techniques may be used, it's, and it's uh, catching on. Pros are uh, non-invasive nature and reduced cost. Cons are uh, positive predictive value is uh, very low. In transcranial Doppler is 36% and MRA is 59%. Uh, negative predictive value is still higher, but positive predictive value is very poor. Ischemic pattern for the different pathological mechanisms seen in uh, 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 intracranial disease. Perforator type is the first one which shows the infarct that is usually perforator type infarct. And uh, second one is the artery 2 artery emboli infarct where you're seeing an infarct in two areas. Third one is a hemodynamic infarct due to hypoperfusion. Management, yeah, antiplatelet uh, treatment is good at recurrent stroke prevention. It is supported by uh, three trials, uh, warfarin versus aspirin, VASID trial, dual antiplatelet superior to single antiplatelet uh, CLARE trial, and SAMPRIS which is a controversial trial, but uh, it should st stenting versus aggressive medical therapy alone. It showed stenting uh, plus aggressive medical therapy was associated with more risks. For this trial, they used the wingspan self-expanding nitinol stent. And this showed that stenosis of 74.6% was improving to 43% and even 27% after stenting. But the periprocedural rate of neurological complications was 6% and 80% of these people died within 30 days. Uh, so FDA approval then was uh, changed from more than 50% stenosis to 70 to 90% stenosis only. This is the wingspan self-expanding nitinol stent in this stent system. It consists of first a, a wire with a balloon and then a self-expanding stent. The procedure is explained in sequence. The dual uh, maneuver of two wires also was associated with more emboli embolization is what is said. So considerations and future prospects of endovascular intervention in uh, intracranial disease. So patients who failed antithrombotic therapy were found to benefit, benefit most from endovascular treatment than those who did not. So uh, refractory cases are better, uh, would help in better patient selection. Early recanalization will happen with once the uh, angioplasty is done, which rescues the ischemic penumbra, but problems of lack stability and reperfusion hemorrhage uh, follow with this, and some control has to be there for that. Also, snow plowing of unstable plaques will happen while the wire passes uh, in patients treated with endovascular therapy, and this leads to perforator infarctions. Uh, Periprocedural complications also, they found that anterior circulation uh, fared better than posterior circulation in this uh, SAMPRIS trial. And hence, they find that uh, many uh, other devices could be developed for the posterior circulation to reduce that rate. Hyperperfusion or poor collateral circulation downstream of the stenotic arteries was is better treated with 
uh, stenting versus artery to artery emboli, which in which stenting will probably angioplasty and stenting will probably lead to more damage. So now intracranial aneurysms with extracranial carotid stenosis. This is a tandem uh, lesion in both the areas. It goes uh, aneurysms often go undetected, most often present with hemorrhage when it's already too late. Uh, Unruptured intracranial aneurysms are treated with clipping or coiling. There is low prevalence of both the lesions in tandem, that is 3.2% only. The most common sites of aneurysms, uh, the red areas show more likelihood of the aneurysm location, while the white areas are least likely. The treatment dilemma in this is whether to treat the carotid stenosis first or the aneurysm. If you treat the carotid stenosis first, uh, since the stenosis typically causes progressive uh, compensation and dilate, uh, vasodilatation, when the flow is uh, increased, it could lead to aneurysm rupture because of the already dilated system. While if uh, aneurysm repair is done first, then you're risking the patient under general anesthesia with a hyperperfused uh, cranial circulation and access to the aneurysm itself may be challenging because you're moving through the stenotic carotid. Considerations, no conclusive evidence was given uh, for, uh, is given for that all aneurysms must be treated. You can, uh, there is no evidence for that. Uh, no significant benefit also in certain age groups of less than 15 to 35 years or those who were aged 45 to 70 when the aneurysm was smaller than 7 mm in the anterior circulation. So a single stage endovascular treatment seems to be the future where uh, the chances of complications are less. This is done with the close monitoring and uh, dynamic change of uh, managing management of blood pressure. This is a picture showing carotid artery stenosis treated by uh, angioplasty and stenting. In the same patient, a pipeline embolization device was used to treat two aneurysms and the uh, outcome was good. Cerebral vasculitis. Vasculitis is blood vessel inflammation that occurs due to heterogeneous set of etiologies. It could be immunologic, infectious, neoplastic, uh, any of the two, three. Uh, incidence is one to two per million. Clinical and pathological presentation, it's uh, either acute, subacute, chronic, or relapsing and remitting, just like all autoimmune diseases. Symptoms, <laughs> excuse me, uh, headaches, seizures, cranial nerve neuropathies, uh, encephalopathy, stroke, hemorrhage, cognitive changes, and aseptic meningoencephalitis. The diagnosis is the gold standard is by CSF analysis, which detects pleocytosis and intrathecal immunoglobulin synthesis. Imaging studies can be done to assess the degree of cerebral involvement. Uh, treatment is by steroids, uh, systemic vasculitis with the CNF in involvement. If there is a vessel that could be targeted to improve the circulation, uh, then only revascularization procedure can be uh, considered. Lacunar infarcts, they are non-cortical infarcts resulting from single penetrating branch occlusion of large cerebral arteries. The infarct diameters can range from 0.2 to 15 mm. The risk factor is the same as that for any stroke. The insults in lacunar infarcts are 20% of all strokes and uh, mostly asymptomatic. If they are symptomatic, they lead to motor hemiparesis, aphasia, dysarthria, change in consciousness, mutism, and sensory motor dysfunction. Uh, they most often affect those areas in circulation where collaterals are, are typically limited. That is the putamen, pallidum, pons, thalamus, internal capsule, corona, and caudate nucleus. They don't often uh, involve the cortex. Pathophysiology of these infarcts uh, involve either uh, the same thing associated with uh, cerebrovascular disease. It's either the chronic hypertension that ultimately result in localized uh, the chronic hypertension or uncontrolled diabetes, which cause vessel changes or intermill plaques. Differential diagnosis should include hemorrhage, infections, tumors, vasculitis, or cardiac emboli. So uh, the Imaging CT scans were only identified only 35% of lesions in lacunar stroke patients. MRI identified at least one lacunar uh, correlating with signs and symptoms in 73 patients out of 101 study. But still, CT is often the first uh, scan done while uh, because of the speed of which you can extradite the patient. 
treatment medical therapy similar to other non hemorrhagic stroke management with current guidelines indicating administration of IV TPA uh, given within three hours of stroke onset, preventative treatment, attenuatic medical conditions that contribute to increased stroke recurrence. Surgically, carotid endarctectomy is indicated for lacuna stroke with patients with 70% stenosis or greater in the ipsilateral internal carotid artery, which has uh, been discussed in the previous sessions. Uh, again, the high number needed to treat to prevent one stroke in two years is a consideration that needs to be made. But any any ICA with 70% uh, stenosis or greater and uh, symptomatic should be treated. Yeah, that will be all. Thank you.